Welcome to Mono Tutorials. In this session, we're going to be looking at weight painting in Blender. First, we're going to be looking at an overview of weight painting. Then we're going to look at setting up your assets so it's easy to work with. Then we're going to look at editing weights, uh, asset and bone visibility, and then improving your weights for a final result. Let's jump in. First, we should go into what is weight painting. Weight painting is when you're assigning a vertex to a bone so that bone has control over the vertex. Now, a vertex may have more than one bone. So you could have the arm here being mostly weighted to this, but once you get to the elbow, you can actually blend between the upper arm and the lower arm. So by using weight painting, you can control exactly how your character moves in a more natural way. Weight uh, is, if it's one, or in this case red, uh, that will be 100% on the selected bone. Uh, zero is not applied to that bone at all, and in this case, that's blue. Now it is possible to weight paint in many standard 3D asset creation tools. Uh, things like Revit and Rhino may not have these tools. I'm assuming they don't because they're more focused on architecture and engineering. Whereas things like Maya, Blender, 3D Studio Max are a bit more general and can do things with characters and bone structures and rigging. To do this, basically we have to paint, and it's literally painting, the vertices to a bone. Now, when it comes to Blender, which is what we're looking at in this tutorial, is make sure that we have auto normalize on. Uh, this will save a lot of hassle. Go into weight paint mode on your avatar asset. I go to the tool over here, and then go down to auto normalize. This will allow your vertices to add up to one in comparison to having two vertices with perhaps more than one total, which gets confusing when you're trying to do things numerically. Moving on, you'll note that if I select the rig first, hold shift and then the avatar, go to weight paint, I can use control click to select different bones. So if I'm using the scarves, which I added, and were not used in the Mixamo rigging approach. Uh, these are pink, which means there are zero weights applied. If I just do the weight paint on its own, it's very difficult to select the bones, and I would actually have to use uh, these assets here, which you can do, but clicking is a much easier approach. So let's set that up again. Re avatar rig, shift avatar, and then weight paint. Left control and click to select the bone we want. If you want to, you could always edit the weights of the Mixamo avatar. I noticed that on the head, so we could do a quick uh, improvement here, is that the chin is a little bit on the neck. So on our brush setting, we have our weight, radius, and strength. Uh, weight is the setting of the weight, radius is how big the brush is, and strength is how strongly do we apply the weight. And that's kind of the very simple approach <laughs> to applying uh, bones to your asset. So that means the head will animate a little bit more accurately with the chin, and the chin won't bend weird. <laughs> so there's that. If I want to remove the weight on a bone, once again, select the bone and then paint with the weight at zero and then everything in between. So with the weight at one and strength at full, uh, we can have that. But if we put the strength to 0 0.02, we'll have a much lighter strength. And then you can sort of paint and build up your asset. Other tools that you can use that are very useful, down here you have a blur, so that will blur the weights of the vertices that are there. You also have smear, which basically smears your weights across the asset. And another one here is average. Uh, that said, the uh, main one I will use is blur. That is a really good way to sort of soften uh, between bones. Now, we want our scarf to be applied to these bones. Now, if I paint directly here and paint there, it may be quite difficult to paint on the scarf alone, but not the asset behind it. 
Now, one way around this is using the masking tools. So for that, we can select the masking tool and then use the selection tool. Select some of the asset and then press control L to select all of the scuff and then control I to select everything else and then H to hide it. Then we can select all of the assets. Once again, control L to select it all. The X-ray mode does not work in the weight tools. So sometimes you'll need to select the whole asset and then we can paint just on our asset there. There are some notes with this approach, however, if I uh, turn the masking tool off, which I have to do to select a different bone, everything is visible again. If I do not select a bone and select something else instead, I might unselect everything. So you'll need to uh, go back and use the selection tool for all of the assets and then use control L if need be to select the asset that you're talking about. Once sorted, however, you can get back to painting the weights. Now in this state, uh, the bones are kind of in the way. So it is possible, let's go back to object mode and select just our rig. We can go to object data properties on the avatar and change these to stick as a first example. And then when you go into mode, you can see which ones are a bit easier to work with to select or hide as needed. So I'm gonna go with B-Bone, I think. Get back to the editing with mask cool, and that will make it much easier. So change, select, paint again, and continue as you need to. Now, if you want to, you can reduce the radius a bit. So you can only, you can make sure to get the vertices you would like. Now, the thing is like, say for example, this scarf would be very sort of angular because of how I've done this. So I'm, I'm doing this approach specifically to get a baseline. So if we go back to object mode, select the rig and pose mode, if I select individual origins, so each bone rotates individually and rotates. And if this is on rest position, we want to pose position. And as you can see, it's very right angled. So we want to blend these vertices between these two bones in order to make that work. So once again, let's start here and go to blur. So this is a good example of pushing this a little bit further down the line. Now, if you want to, you could paint at a lower strength. So there's many different approaches to how you do this. I might do it here as well, just to sort of soften that. Next bone. Now notice how this changed and that's because auto normalize is on. So the two bone structures will affect each other when you're painting them with auto normalize. So we can sort of soften this as well. So let's go that a little bit higher perhaps. Do the same down here. Move down the line. And then we can sort of push that up as well. So let's see how that looks. Once again, pose mode, select those and rotate. Another thing we can do is use posed animation. So go down to the bottom and press the record button here. Use control to snap the animation or use I to set a keyframe at frame zero. After that, we can move to frame 10 and then repose, so we rotate. Uh, you can then uh, wait, paint in a pose mode. Don't forget to turn off the keyframe animation once you're done. When we go to paint our weights, uh, we can do so with this as a visual guide. Uh, this time I'm going to actually brush a bit. So let's change the strength to 0 0.01. Now we're going to So that looks all right. And then we can go back to this one 
selecting that tool, put this back on, and putting that weight a little bit higher as well. So you have that complete control of uh, painting the weights of your assets so it looks the way you kind of want. Maybe push these a little bit further down. And then once again, that, this one, that, and then push this a little bit up to get the effect we want. So this looks much more like a, a smooth transition between the two points, which is kind of what we want to do. And that's excellent. So an example of this versus what it was, that versus that. Actually, let's undo that. Or more the point, let's press I to do location, rotation, and scale uh, to do that. And then we can go to 10 and then do it. As noted, make sure to turn this off. <laughs> this is a very common thing to leave on. So when you start doing anything in the space, it'll animate rather than set whatever you do. Uh, so I would spend a little bit of time on that as well. And of course you can do and improve any of the other assets in a very similar style to what you're looking at here. Now, the last technique that I'll cover in this just quickly, once again, rig, object, weight paint, select the bone we want to use, go back to vertex selection or masking, and then we can assign different levels of the weights uh, with the assign button down here, like so. So there are a few different ways, but the weight painting is the easiest approach. If you have very complicated, like a lot of uh, vertices in one area, it gets a little bit difficult. Another option is purchasing an add-on called weight paint tools on Gumroad. So if I use control X, I can actually set the weights here very easily. Um, so that's quite useful as well. So basically there are many different ways to improve your weight painting environment but this is basically what you're doing with all of the asset. Now, once you have done that, I will use Alt H to unhide everything. And then we have that asset uh, unhidden, which allows us to uh, move on to other assets if we want to. So with arms, I don't want it super soft there. I'd probably want to get these a bit closer and things like that. So those are the basic tools for painting weights in Blender. Hopefully that's quite useful. It's a bit longer tutorial for this one. Um, but once again, there's a lot more to unravel with weight painting. But if your asset is a bit simpler, then between Mixamo and some weight painting, it would be possible to refine the weight paints of your asset to what you see as a better way to create that. So hopefully that helps. Before the next tutorial, I will basically clean this asset up so the scarf and the weight paints are a little bit cleaner, but I'll be basically using the same tools that I've gone through in this tutorial, so you should be able to make the adjustments as needed. With that done, have a nice day and happy building.